Information risk management is a strategy that organisations can use to balance their security investments. So the whole idea of information risk management is that you look at your business objectives, look at where you're trying to go from a strategic perspective, and then you look at the risks involved in applying those business objectives to make sure that your business uh, operates uh, in, a, in a perfect way. So what do we tend to look at from an information risk management perspective is, for example, if you're a, a banking organisation and you want to improve your online banking presence, what are the business objectives they use to move forward with that strategy? So you would want to offer extra services on an online banking application, for example. What are the additional risks involved in providing those additional services to your customers? And then you go about investing money towards securing those particular business objectives that you require to provide those additional services. Uh, enterprises in Asia Pacific don't grasp, I don't think, in what information risk is all about. I think the problem that most organisations have is that we are still very siloed from a security perspective and we don't have an overall security strategy. What information risk management does is it allows you to invest your security across the board. So for example, generically organisations invest in a database security policy, they invest in email policies, etc. all very siloed. Information risk management, uh, the whole process behind that is being able to classify or identify and classify where your main data points are and secure those data points across the organisation regardless of what application type they are. So we're moving away from a siloed security perspective and moving towards a more granular security model that covers your whole organisation. The big ticket risks of being alone by most organisations, uh, I guess there's two things. One is the human aspect. Uh, social engineering is very prevalent in today's society. And most organisations do a fantastic job of creating security uh, solutions from a technology perspective or creating a strategy around technology, but they forget about the human element. So we live in an environment where there's too much trust and there's not enough verification of information. So what we need to do with as uh, vendors but also as enterprises that are providing services to customers is to allow their mechanisms that um, they feel secure in, I guess, utilising the extra functionality that you have uh, provided to them as an enterprise. So, yes, social engineering will be one. Yes, the other issue is we are very adept to falling for fraudulent activity. So anti-fraud is a, a huge component of any security strategy at the moment. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of fraudulent activity where, in previously, hackers used to do, you know, attack organisations for notoriety or to get themselves known in the industry. These days it's become very much a criminal enterprise. So you get situations where hacker for hire is very prevalent in today's society. Most criminal entities have a very sophisticated technology at the table to you know, attack large organisations such as banks, airlines, utilities for financial gain. Okay, proactive risk management involves being able to effectively create a policy and a strategy around security and implement it at all levels of your organisation. We've I guess come from a situation in the past where we've been very reactive from a security perspective, we've waited for attacks to occur, now we're moving ahead of the curve where organisations and vendors are working together to provide security solutions and architectures to hopefully mitigate attacks before they occur. An example of that would be day zero attacks. Um, so if you look previously with virus attacks for example, you know, we could get a new virus released today and it could run rampant within an organisation before a patch was released to fix that particular virus. Today's uh, modern security solutions are more behavioural, able to detect these attacks before they occur. So I guess we're moving towards a practice situation there. From an organisational perspective, yes, we definitely need a security architectural security team in place that can provide the leadership. But I don't think it necessarily relies on a CSO or CISO role. I think it's an, a, a role that needs to be taken from the top. So most CEOs from organisations should be heavily involved in any information risk management a strategy that you put in place because ultimately they own the risk of the organisation. So if there's a data loss or data leakage occurs, the person that's held responsible uh, for that leakage is ultimately going to be the CEO. Most organisations have invested quite heavily in uh, security and storage investments to provide, you know, not only the data involved or the data storage, but also um, mechanisms to secure the data, whether it be at rest or in transit. One of the big mistakes that organisations still make from a security standpoint is that we are still very reactive in deploying security solutions. I think we need to take a step back and look at where we've invested currently and basically invest into security solutions that fit on top of what we already have in place. So we don't need to go back to reinventing the wheel. We need to put in security mechanisms that cover a broader part of your organisation rather than just pinpointing solutions for a specific incident.